To get right to the point, we're all going to die. Some people want to avoid that reality, the rising custom of avoiding the word funeral and talking about celebrations of life. Now, of course, we celebrate life, but we do so precisely because we know we're going to die and that only by dying do we receive real life, eternal life of God. So it's important to accept and realize that death comes for us all. And if we don't want that reality to have too much power over us, then we must face it, prepare for it, and remain confident that we can overcome it. Jesus understands that death is terrifying. We see that pretty clearly in his own agony in the garden later on. And that's part of the reason that this parable uses a wedding feast, practically the opposite of death, to talk about it. Rather than seeing this reality of death as an end in itself, we must, must keep it in the context of what comes next. And this is the meaning of wisdom, so praised in our first reading. Wisdom is to see the fullest picture and act accordingly. All ten virgins, you can think of them like bridesmaids or helpers at the wedding, All ten virgins know that the bridegroom is coming. We all know that death is coming. All ten virgins have the job of providing light for the procession. So just being there isn't enough. They need to be ready with that light. But the foolish virgins don't think ahead. They show up with whatever they happen to have already in the lantern. The five wise ones, however, do see the bigger picture. And they know that everything leading up to that moment will mean nothing if they aren't ready for it. The meaning of your life is anchored in eternity. Your job isn't just to survive until the world ends. It is to be ready to shine forever after that. Nothing, nothing in this world matters if it is not connected in some way to that light we shine after death. And on the flip side, everything in this world can have value if it is connected to this anchor of life, of eternity, of light, connected to love of God and neighbor. And the church always reminds us of this. But as we are drawing to the end of this liturgical year and transitioning into Advent, we focus on it in a particular way. Advent is just three weeks away. And just as you should be prepared for death, so you should be prepared for this season. Don't let the commercialization of Christmas blind you to the incredibly valuable season of preparation that comes before. As the days grow darker and colder, now is the perfect time to let the church guide you into being prepared for what comes next, for the arrival of Christ. And you can even kind of redeem the secular idea of Christmas with this. Just as people tend to save up money or take on extra work to prepare for all the Christmas gifts, so we should learn to store up treasure in heaven to bring enough oil to be prepared for the arrival of Christ, the end of our lives and the world. Take seriously the fact that you are going to die, not by being morose and somber, but by making sure you have enough oil, like the wise virgins. What does that oil mean? It means grace. We so often use the word grace as a generic catch-all word for all the nice things that God gives us. So often we forget it has another meaning. That scripture and tradition tell us about this supernatural power of God that transforms us from the inside out, that delivers us from sin, strengthens us in virtue, makes us holy, enables us to overcome death and enter heaven. Sanctifying grace is just as real as the oil you put in a lamp. More real, in fact. And just as the virgins all know where to find this oil at the merchants, so we know exactly where to get the very real sanctifying grace. The sacraments. And here's the thing about this grace that Catholics keep forgetting that it's what makes heaven, heaven. 
Heaven is not a passing grade on the test of life. It is not a treat that you give to a dog to make it behave or teach it to do tricks. Heaven is a state of being. It is just as much as what you are as where you are. The light from the wise virgin's lamps is part of what makes the feast a feast. Could you have a feast in the dark? And the foolish virgins are left in the dark not because the light was taken away, but because they have no oil. Preparing for death is not just some cruel waiting game. All of life is not just a chance to make it to heaven, but to increase our glory in heaven. Acts of sacrificial love, genuine devotion and prayer, faithfully receiving the sacraments all increase grace and us. Above and beyond the very basic question, do you reject sin, is the much more important question. Do you love God above all else? How we answer this question affects not only whether we get to heaven, but how great our glory will be in heaven. Lord, I long to see your face. This whole month of November is dedicated to praying for the souls in purgatory. And this is a sacred responsibility that you must keep. At the same time, don't let that church's care for souls become an excuse for mediocrity. Purgatory cleanses us of faults. It pays back spiritual debt that we owe because of sin. It makes sure that when we do enter into God's presence, that we are ready to experience the fire of his love as joy rather than pain. But what purgatory doesn't do is give us more oil. It does not make us shine more brightly in heaven or fill us with more grace. Every person in heaven is full of love and joy and lacks nothing. A thimble can be full, and so can a barrel, but there is a difference. A soul that repents at the last second will be full of joy in heaven, even if there's a lot of purgatory first. But its light will be small indeed compared to the soul that lives and dies fully given to the Lord. Both the wise and the foolish virgins had lamps, but only the wise ones thought to bring flasks and increase the amount of oil they could hold. And this allowed them to not only enter the feast successfully, but to shine brightly even before the feast came. By preparing for death, they gave meaning to life. So go and do likewise. You can admit that you are afraid of death, so long as you recognize there is a power greater than death and that that power is offered to you. Meet that fear with grace and you will eventually find that you no longer need to fear it. By living for heaven now, by collecting the oil of God's glory now, not only will you be prepared for death, you will finally begin to truly live.